You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldway, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah Israel 5780, 2019. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Lech Lecha, and I would like to share with you some thoughts actually from my Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Per, and I'd like to share with you some thoughts of my own, based on our Parsha, Avram Avinu, Paragon, we usually think of as the Paragon of Chesed, but, uh, which means kindness. But what I'd like to show actually this week, with Hashem's help, is that he was a paragon of bitachon, of having absolute faith in Hashem, that all that he had, all he would have, was ultimately from God. Okay, so at the very beginning of our parsha, I'd like to read to you a few psukim vayemer, Hashem al Avram. God says to Abraham, Lech lecha mi'artzecho, go away from your place, from away, away from your land, mimoladet chami be'savicha, the place you were born, your house, your father's house, Go to the land that I'm going to show you. I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your name great. You're going to become famous. And it, there will be blessings. Okay, those are the two psukim. Now, what is the idea here? So I'm going to read to you from my Rosh Hashiva. I have a little pamphlet here from a few years ago. Uh, Rabbi Per. He points out, Repair points out that Avram Avinu leaves everything behind. And the Pasuk tells us, as a result of that, he's going to have blessings. Because of Rashi, Rashi says, He says Rashi, very interestingly, going on a path, traveling, causes three things. Causes a person to be less likely to have children. It ordinarily causes a person to have less money. This is a shame. It makes a person less famous. That's why I needed three blessings in this verse. One is to tell him that he's going to have children as a result of going to Eretz Yisrael. Second is he's going to have money as a result of going to Eretz Yisrael. And third of all, he's going to have, he's going to become famous. So he asks his spouse, Vad Tamua. Kanani asks an amazing question. He says that, what's the point of the blessings? Is the point of the blessings just, now the fact is that he's going on this on the path, and he's going to have less kids, he's going to have less money, he's going to have less fame, so don't worry, you'll get it, get it back. You'll get back what you're missing. Is that what the blessing is about? The blessing is about just getting back what he's missing? It can't be. It can't be. It sounds like the blessing is a, it's a blessing that's going to be much greater. Additionally, he asks an amazing question. A second question, he says, the fact that Avram Avinu didn't have children, what was the reason? It wasn't because it wasn't because he was about to travel. Sorry, it wasn't because of the fact that he was traveling. I'll show you Avram Visara Akar, and they doesn't. Avram and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, were unable to have children. That was their nature. They were they were um, unable to have kids. So how can we say that since it's going to be a mute, there's going to be a um, lessening of their ability to have children as a result of going, going on the path, following God's word, through that you're going to be blessed and you're going to have children. Either they can or they can't. What's going on here? So he says an amazing thing. Listen to this. A person, this is a foundational concept. Every single person has all that he needs when it comes to his wealth, his money, when it comes to his children, when it comes to his level of fame. A person, it's predetermined. Hashem has already decided. Each and every person, how much fame they're going to have, how much wealth they're going to have. Everything is determined by Kodesh Baruch Hu. The says an amazing thing. The only way to change it, the only way to change what a person has, to upgrade to a higher level, is by actually going into a place that looks like the opposite. It's counterintuitive. You go through some kind of trial, some kind of tribulation, some kind of difficulty. You go in a place where it seems less likely that you're going to have children, less likely that you're going to have wealth, less likely that you're going to have fame. 
does agav milichis a beautiful thing. By the way, when Hakadosh Baruch Hu is going to to fill it up, you know, like your your kli is now empty, your your cup is now emptied out because you don't have there. When Hashem pours in that new measure of goodness, of wealth, of children, etc., yachol ha'isav alav gamis hakol. So there's an, a, an amazing spiritual dynamic that occurs. Now that it's being refilled, your cup is being refilled, it can get to a higher level than it was before. V'zeu tev ha'elam, Rosh Hashiva says, that's the nature of the world. That's how Kaddish Baruch Hu built the Bria, he built the creation. So Avram Avinu was instructed to do something which seemed like he would lose out on, but rather, instead of him losing out, he merited to, ha- to reach a higher level as a result. V'ra'i l'zeh, Rosh Hashiva says, Rapper says, we can see this. Yeridasa shall Avram Avinu Mitzrayim. When Abraham goes down to Egypt, what happens? Why did he go down there? Devadei Layard Ad Shal Yamatzur Shal Chisar Nachmer Tzisrael. It was because of the fact that Avram Avinu didn't have anything to eat in the land of Israel. Right? What happens? Shilakin Layayo Yisav Makom Shizvah Kadosh Baruch Hu Lecha Shem. It has to be that way because there was no other reason that he would leave. He wouldn't leave the place Hashem had told him. You have to go to this place, to Eretz Yisrael. When Mitzrayim Lach Ches Ishtoi. What happened? They took his wife. That's an even greater loss, right? That's a, tr- a tremendous trial that he went through. The result of them taking his wife was what? The result of that loss, that seemingly, that seemingly terrible thing that occurred to him, what was the result? The result was that he ended up rich. He got wealth. This is to teach us an amazing lesson. That where do the blessings come? The blessings come because of the fact that we have a loss. Whenever we see that there's a loss, whenever we see something has gone wrong, whenever we see that something is going not our way, not the way that we want it to go, we should wait. we got to wait. Expect something good is going to happen afterwards. Whenever we have something, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, gives us a patch, Shem gives us a, a negative experience, it's always followed. You can look back in your life, you'll see, it's always followed by a positive thing. A blessing comes into it. This is a sign for us, for the children, the, the people of Israel. We need to know. Avram Avinu, just like it was true for him, we also need to know that a person has everything that they need. If a person is missing something, this is the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings him a future blessing. Amazing thing. Okay? So what I want to bring out from here is two... You said this. We're going to see there's more here. But you said, foundational concept. This is to strengthen our bitachin. We need to know this. How do we know that we can have faith in God? Because we know that there are certain spiritual rules built into the Bria, built into creation. One of them is, everything that we're supposed to have, we have. That's number one. Number two is, whenever something negative occurs, whenever it seems that we're losing, we're not losing. We're about to gain. Okay? Bitachon. V'yesh l'hoisif. He says another thing, an amazing thing. Oyed inyan acher shel Amazing thing he says like this. That when Hashem said to him, Lech lecha, Shekadosh Baruch Hu Omer leleches el ha'arz ha'shar reka v'lar pir shamakam. Hashem says to Avram Avinu, Go to the place I'm going to show you. He doesn't say where to go. He doesn't specify what the place is. The place I'm going to show you. The verse tells us that where did they go? Where did they leave to? They left towards the land of Canaan. The land of Israel. How did they know? How did he know that that was the place to go to? Any, any more than any other place in the world. Shem says the place I'm going to show you. It could be anywhere. Near the Faresh. Rosh Hashiva says that it would seem like this. We find that it says at the end of Parshas Noach. At the end of last week's Parsha, a few psukim before what we just read, it says that Terach, Avram's father, took Avram and Lot, he took his daughter-in-law. There was a plan. Terach had already decided that he was heading towards Eretz Canaan for whatever reason. They didn't reach their destination. They stopped in Charon and they stayed there. Okay? What's the idea? 
So we see explicitly Shemi Kaidan at Sivish Shalech Lecha, Haya Aram Avinu Halech Leretz Kinan, Amaz is Sivan Asaki Vacharan. We see explicitly that originally the plan was to go to Eretz Kinan. Aram Avinu had been on the road to the land of Israel. He stopped for whatever reason in Haran. He was, got stuck there. So if Hashem says to him now, I want you to go, and he doesn't say where to go, it must be that he was to continue on the path that he was already found. Why did he continue to Canaan? Because if Hashem doesn't specify, it must be, wherever I was already, the trajectory I was already on, that's where I should continue. Vizel Limud Yisrael says Rabbi Per an amazing teaching for us. This is a teaching for the people of Israel, a for all generations. When a person is at a crossroads in his life, he's not sure what does Hashem expect of him. What does God want me to do? What am I to do at this point? I feel confused. I feel lost. I feel like the I feel stuck. I feel stuck in Charon. The person is obligated to continue on the path that he had been going until now. Hashem gives people signs. He gives us direction throughout our life. Exactly where to go. If you're not sure, there's no sign, keep going in the direction that you were going until now. Unless, of course, it's something which is a negative direction. That's not what we're speaking about. But if a person is unsure, you can look in the past and you can say, okay, what has got me here and what has got me until here? What successful things did I do in my, in my ruchnis, my spirituality, in my going through this world? How do I continue? I continue in the, in the trajectory that I was on until now. Okay? And he has one more point. I'm not going to read it inside. I'll just mention it because it's very interesting as well. And that is that Nimrod, the reason he says... Perhaps the reason, he offers us a, a possibility, the reason that Tarach left, why did they leave Ur-Kazdim? Why did they head to Eretz Kenan originally? The reason was, he says, because Nimrod was trying to kill Avram Avinu. He was trying to kill Abraham. They had to run away. The point of it, the reason, excuse me, why Terach took his son Avram, etc., to run away. Why? It was because to get away from Nimrod. Interestingly, what happened in the end? Our Chazal tell us that we know in the, in later in our Parsha, as we're going to actually see something there as well, later in our Parsha, so there was a war between the four kings and the five kings, and one of those kings was Nimrod, meaning Avram and Nimrod were to meet up again. So the idea here is, says so Marash Shiva, that if a person is meant to be in the proximity of certain people, certain enemies, certain situations, a person can try to run away from those situations, but those situations may run after him if that's the will of Hashem. Okay, so we have another two points here when it comes to Bitach, when it comes to trusting Hashem. The first point is that we have to believe, we have to know that our Kodesh Baruch Hu gives us signs along the way how we're to go. What is our path? Where are we supposed to be headed? And we can be sh- assured, if we are not sure, if we don't have a new sign, continue in the way that we've always been going. Rest assured that we're going in the right way. So that's the third point. The fourth point is, every single thing that occurs in our lives, this is connected to one of the first points, every single thing that, is, that happens in our lives, all of the interactions that we have, all the people that we come into contact with, it's all predetermined. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sets it up. Everything is there. Of course, everything is for our best. Everything comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, so those points three and four. Now I'd like to say one more point, which is very interesting. This is my own thought. It came out of actually reading a piece in Sikhos Musa from Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, but uh, has nothing to do with what he says. But this is just the inspiring thought that I had. So we had the war of the four kings and the five kings. Avram Avinu goes out to war. He's able to save his nephew Lot, brings back all the people of Sadaim. He has an amazing meeting with Malkit Tzedek, Melach Shalim, who our sages say was Shem. And he meets the king of Sodom. And now, the rules of war are very simple and very clear. If you win, you win, right? If you win the war, you get all the spoils of the war, you get all the people, they become your slaves. Vayomer Melech Sodom, this is in chapter 14, verse 21. Vayomer Melech Sodom el Avram. The king of Sodom comes out to Abraham and he says, Tell me a nefesh v'ruchush kachlach. He has a lot of chutzpah. He says, give me the people, you keep all of the spoils. Right? 
Avram Avinu had rights to everything. Avram says something very important to the king of Sodom. I raise up my hand to Hashem, the highest God. He makes an oath. He swears. God, to, I'm making an oath, said Abraham, to God, the highest God who owns the heavens and the earth. To whom belong the heavens and the earth. He says, I'm not going to take anything, not a, not a shoelace, not a leather strap from a, from a, from a, from a shoe. I'm not going to take anything that you think is yours. That's not, I'm, I'm adding in that word. If I will take anything that's yours. I don't want you to say that you made me rich. Okay? So, very interesting. Very interesting thing that Avram Avinu says. We do find in the Parsha that Avram Avinu has no problem taking stuff from, from Mitzrayim, from the Egyptians. I guess they weren't going to say that they made him rich. What does he care so much about the Melech Sedaim? What does he care so much if the king of Sodom says, Oh, everything that Abraham has is mine. What's the big deal? So, on the surface of it, Avram Avinu doesn't want to kill Hashem. He doesn't want anyone to say something that's not true. He wants it to be very clear. Because the Shabbos is the one who gives it to him. He doesn't want there to be any statements by anybody else. To the contrary. But I want to say something else. I want to say something different. Which may not be the Pashup Shat and the Pesukim, but certainly is a lesson for me. And I hope that it inspires you as well. And that is that we need to be careful with our Bitochen. We want to have Bitochen. We want to have faith in Hashem. We want to believe to the extent that we believe it truly, down to, down to our core, that our Kodesh Baruch everything that we get is from Hashem. Everything that we get is nothing to do with my Kaychi nothing to do with my strength, with my business acumen, with my proper PR, with my efforts and all the business knowledge and all of the people that I learned from and all the magazines that I read. Nothing to do with that. I'm successful if I'm successful for one reason. And if I'm not successful, it's for the same reason. It's because our Kodesh Baruch Hu decided I'm supposed to have a certain amount of money this year. That's how much I get. No matter how much I bang my head, no matter how much I try, no matter what I do, or no matter how little I do, it's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I have to believe that. I have to believe that fully. It's a mitzvah. It's called the mitzvah bitachin. There's an obligation. Don't think. You're in trouble if you start to think that. Run away from that kind of thinking. You've got to watch out for that kind of thinking. And you've got to watch out for people who talk that way as well. Don't read those magazines that talk about the, all of the different experts in business who say how they were able to accomplish and become rich. Don't read it. You know why? Because it has a bad effect on you. It has a bad effect on me, on my bitachon. When I hear people talking about that this is how they became successful. Eh, eh, eh. Not true. That's not how they became successful. Nigzar from HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Rosh Hashanah. They're going to have a certain amount of money. That's how they became successful. That's why. Nothing to do with their efforts. Nothing to do with anything that they did. It's not true. It's a lie. It's a sheker of the Yetzirah. Watch out for it. Avram Avinu says, I don't want you to say, the king of Sodom, that you made me rich. There's only one being in creation that, that can make me rich. That's HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the creator himself. If I hear you saying that you made me rich, I might start to believe that. That's a no-no. Watch out for that. That's point number five. Point number six. This is in the in Dark Yabitachan. I just learned this today. I wanted to share with you as well. It's another point. Or it's connected here. Vizeu Iker, I'm reading from Dark Yabitachan, Madragas Adam, the altar of Navardic. Vizeu Iker Vidarech Abitachan. Asher Adam Mukhrachu Shilai Lotzer Tsaras Mokhar. Says the altar of Navardic, I need to be so careful not to be worried about tomorrow. Don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that. That's my Hishtalus is doing it for me. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that I can get away from what I'm supposed to have or what I'm not supposed to have. Don't think that way. Don't think about tomorrow. If a person is trying to figure out how can I make more money? How can I be rich? How can I be more successful? How can I... Not only won't you succeed, says the altar of Navarik, not only won't you get rich, you will lose out. There's a spiritual principle. There's a spiritual principle. If you run after something, it runs away from you. This is the nature 
of the spiritual nature of reality. When you run after a certain, I'm going to do that thing, if I do that really well, if I do it really hard, I'm going to make money. I'm going to be rich. The more you run after something, the more it runs away from you. This is explicit. The Gros says it. In Evan Shalema Perak Bez section Yud. There's a concept that if I run after greatness, if I run after honor, it runs away from me. And if I run away from greatness, it runs after me. It's true about every single measure, about every single character trait. Specifically, in regards to bitachon. It's true, if I'm running after certain things, I'm losing my bitachon, I'm given over to the spiritual principle that the thing that I'm trying to get runs away from me. I've experienced this many times in my life. It's a fact. I remember, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it here, but I asked once Mordechai ben David, great singer, how he became so famous, how he became so successful. He said, it's nothing that I did. I was the least likely to succeed of all of my brothers. HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose me. Kadosh Baruch Hu gave me a gift. And this is true. If you are truly looking to understand how to have bitachon, says the altar of Navarik, you will see from your experience that the more you try to run after a siba, after a particular thing that you think is going to make you the money, that you think is going to give you your needs, it runs away from you. Okay? So we have six points here, I think. All together... And I want to bless you, and I ask you to bless me, because the Baruch Hu should help us, that we should recognize that everything is from Him, that if we're supposed to be blessed, we will be blessed. If things that are going on in our life are negative or seem negative, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu opening up to give us more blessings. HaKadosh Baruch Hu should help us to realize that no matter, no matter where we are, no matter where we're going, He's, He's guiding us. And if we're not sure where to go, HaKadosh Baruch Hu should help us to recognize where we should go, Continue on the trajectory we've been on until now. Because Baruch Hashem us to recognize that no matter what, the situations in our lives are tailor-picked for us. Because Baruch should help us recognize and realize that there are things that can prevent us from having bitachon. Hashem should help us to run away from those things, not get fooled or sucked into those things. And Kaddish Baruch should help us to recognize that it's only upon Him that we need to rely and upon nobody else. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.